Okay, welcome back. Okay, for Sunday this week, I would like to show you a little bit of a trick, a tip, something you can use for yourself on how to make a gasket for yourself when you find yourself without one. A simple bit of initiative using some cereal box card, some blue high noir, a toffee hammer, and an instantaneous gasket that fits 100% perfect every time. How's that? Cool. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> right, serious now. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, there will come a time when you're doing a little servicing job on a bike. It might be a service, a clutch adjustment, or a Harley. It might be whatever it is, and you're going to take a casing off, and you'll realise you haven't got a gasket to put it back on with, or the gasket that's there is torn or damaged, or you get a gasket out of the packaging that you've bought, and it's the wrong one. You bought the wrong packet, or they gave you the wrong whatever. You will at some point find yourself without a gasket and in need of one. And the simplest way possible, honestly, when I did my formal training, which was an incredibly long time ago, don't even laugh, it was, a, I trained as a bus and truck fitter a long, long time ago, and very often the gaskets that we needed for things just didn't exist, we didn't have them, so we just made them ourselves. Simple trick, and a, a guy that I was learning with at the time, he taught me this trick, it's so, so easy. You start off with, uh, what I'm gonna do for the purpose of this is use this, this is, Penny's front sprocket cover from the Triumph, which we upgraded to a different one, uh, and it does afford me. It doesn't have a gasket, so please don't troll me and say, you don't need gaskets, what are you wasting the time for? I know this is just what I have at the time. This gives me a perfect little casing to demonstrate with, and it has a little bit of flat mating surface on the inside that I can demonstrate the making of a gasket for that. You can see how complicated that is, all the shapes around there. If you had to buy an exact gasket for that, if you tried cutting that with scissors, you just wouldn't do it. This is the easiest method. Take some cereal box card, um, or any bit of straightforward card you need. Just not, not the corrugated kind, it's got to be solid card. Um, the one you get in your shirts, so when you buy a shirt, that stuff in the back is brilliant. Or as I said, cereal box. Take some of that first, then you need some blue Heidemar. Now, blue Heidemar is something that I've been talking about for a very long time. I've been using it since, oh, well, when I trained as a bus and truck fitter, I was given this tube of Marston's Heidemar by the Storman. You still got it. And I've still got it. There is that much of it left. It lasts forever. Come on in close, man. This stuff is a blue gasket jointing compound. Uh, it's like a, a kind of sticky wax and it dries. There's a, there's a solvent in it. And when the solvent dries away, it becomes like a sticky putty. It's a fantastic oil proof sealant. In fact, that's even drying out already. Look, you can even see how sticky that's getting straight away. Now it never dries. If you put a blob of it on the bench, leave it there for a year, it never dries hard or to go like rubber. The problem with silicon sealants is that that's what the, they do dry. They become a solid subject and then it just tears off and it starts to leak. This stuff, because it stays sticky forever, it stays oil tight forever. So I'm going to show you how to use this to make the gasket that you need and the fact that a couple of little do's and don'ts with it as well. Also, that's the old tube, that's it today. So um, how long is that? 35 years? You treated yourself. 35 years later I've bought a second tube. Just splashing out, I just don't care, <laughs> me. Right, let's, get, let's clean that off and I'll show you a bit. Right, we'll hang the expense, we'll break open the new one. Just don't care, just reckless me. There we go. And I'll put a link underneath to this. This is the modern equivalent of Hylomar and it is the, the one product that you treat yourself to for your toolbox that you will never regret. You'll use it all the time. Let's get that there. Break the tube open, there it is. It's about six pounds. Is it about six pounds mm -hmm. a tube? That's how that was. There it is, there's the modern version. And you can see that this is the 1985 version. And I kid you not, I was given this in about 1985. It hasn't changed a great deal. And I assume it's gonna work the same way. I'm gonna put the little applicator tube on the top. We'll just snip the end off there. Should wear eyewear for this, shouldn't I? <laughs> right, this is the solution. What we're gonna do is stick the piece of gasket card to the casing and then with the hammer, tap it out. If you've never seen it before, it works really well. If you've never done it before, it will amaze you how easy it is. So the first thing I wanna do is get the gasket roughly to shape. And the easiest way to do that is simply sit the casing on it, take a pencil, where are we? Run outside. Just draw around like that, just around the outside. All right, that gives me roughly the outside. So I know I don't need that bit. Well, that you really don't have to be too precious about it. There we are, that will do. Right, let's get rid of that. Next thing is to apply some of this to both the surfaces. Just put a thin smear of it on there, honestly, thin, like that. 
and then another thin smear on the casing itself. Job done. And then wipe it in. You're looking to get rid of 90% of it. Just leave like that, a very thin smear of it. That's all you need. That's it. And then the same on there. Now, after you've done that, you've applied some to the gasket and some to the casing itself. Just leave it. Have a cup of tea, give it about 15 minutes for all of the thinners that's in that, all of the solvent that's in it to evaporate. You want it to become kind of sticky to the touch, but not wet, so it doesn't move around. It kind of becomes like a sticky plastic, almost like it's a glue on the back of a sticker, that sort of thing. So let's let that dry, come back in a minute, and then we can apply the two together. Okay, now this is about five, six minutes later, all ready to go, dry, slightly tacky, but not as sticky and gooey as it was just now. So it's a little bit like you do with some glue, some of the contact adhesives, let it dry first and all that solvent evaporate away and then offer up the item. You've got the pencil line around it, that's important. Close as you can and just drop it on. Press that in and there it is. Now that will stick, just get yourself a little bit of pressure in there, stick it down. and that's pretty firmly stuck. Here we are. Now, the next bit is the bit that people worry about. Uh, some of you would have already seen this. Some of you would already know how to do this, tapping out a gasket, it's known as whatever, but I thought I'd just show you, just in case you've never seen it before and you're stuck. So, all you do, what we're using, is if this is this is other little piece of gasket or mating surface here, you've got this edge on the casing, and what you're doing is tapping against this edge very gently, you don't have to hit it, no don't swing on it, <laughs> don't lean on it monkey boy, just little gentle taps and you're using that edge to cut through the paper with the hammer itself. So all you do, a little toffee hammer, come in on the edge, gasket. Okay finally we've obviously got bolt holes to consider so pencil and just in the center of the hole make a little hole like that. Same as that one right in the middle and the same as that one. There we are. So what we've achieved there is an absolutely perfect card gasket that will seal that every time if it was a sealing joint. Now obviously the first thing to be careful of is not to go belting it with a heavy hammer because that will put too much impact into the casing but they can take that tapping with the toffee hammer. It's a little lightweight hammer and no harder than you'd hit your finger. That's where you want to keep it. Obviously if you use lighter gasket paper just the thin gasket paper you can get, you can actually roll it. I've seen a little, just use a little roller and that's enough, but usually tap it with a hammer and that's as simple as it is. I'll show you a little trick which might also help. All right, and that is what you then put on this. You've got this card gasket now, perfectly sealed onto there, and it's contained on the casing. Now I did this in a video a very long time ago. You could, if you wish, put more Hylomar on there, then put some on the engine itself, wipe it away so there's not much there, let it dry, apply it, bolt it on, job done. And then you'll have an absolutely oil tight joint. Now I would suggest doing that for a pressure joint. If it's something like a sump, sump tray underneath, I definitely do that for a sump because it's always gonna get extremely hot, there's a lot of expansion and contraction under there, and I'd stick both sides. But if it's a side casing, clutch case, primary case on your Harley, anything like that, here's a little trick. Use the Hylomar on the casing, so it's stuck to the casing, but use regular, ordinary grease. Just ordinary LM grease on the other side. Now, that will still seal. On a light casing, that will still seal just fine. No problem at all. But the benefit there now is that when you put that 
on the engine, bolt it into place, do the job, etc. In the future, when you come back to take that off, all of that gasket is going to come off with the casing. Meaning you can put it on the bench, take your scraper, and you can scrape it all off. You won't get half the gasket stuck to the engine, all falling in the oilways and unable to get to, and half of it stuck to the case, which is what normally happens. So if it's a pressure casing, use the higher more on the outside. If it's a less high pressure casing, if it's something like a primary or something like that, or a rocker cover gasket, it's absolutely fine. You can stick the gasket to the casing, the easy thing you can put on the bench and scrape off, and you can just use grease on top of it so that when it goes down on the engine, it's absolutely fine. One last final thing I want to say about this, the advice, even on the packaging, is to do up a joint, uh, a casing, whatever, when you're using Blue Hylomar in two stages, and that's to allow the, the product itself to squash into place. So do it up, wrist tight, so it's nice and tight, and that's enough, but before you torque it down, give it about four or five minutes, then come back to it, then torque it up, and that gives the Hylomar a chance to squeeze out. The, the final part of the warning, though, is about too much. That's always got to be it. If you look on here, Ben, we're coming close. If when you bolt it to the engine, you get lots and lots of ooze out, then you've used too much. It's so important not to use too much of this product. The reason being that if you get a big blob of it ooze out on the outside, yes, it's very easy to just wipe it away, no problem. But remember, you'll also get blobs ooze out inside like this that you cannot wipe away. And if that then breaks off, this is grease, but if it was Hylomar, if you have a blob of Hylomar floating around in your engine oil, it's gonna eventually find its way to the oil strainer in the sump, and it is sticky and it is soft and it will bung up the oil strainer and cause future lubrication problems. So never use too much Hylomar, it's very important. But all of this, all of these instructions come on the back, very easy to use. Some Hylomar blue for your toolbox, you will never regret buying it. Uh, you'll probably never buy more than one either. <laughs> There we are, right, a couple more things and we can wrap this up. Right, okay, now, the two more things. The first one is the use of this stuff on sump plugs. I absolutely recommend it every time, I truly do. Now, sump plugs are one of the things that are most commonly stripped because people worry about them leaking. This is, again, something that will rescue you like you wouldn't believe. I'll show you the procedure for putting this on a sump plug to make it a plug that will never leak, no matter what, even if you don't fully talk it up. I'll show you, come on in close, man. Right, so take your sump plug, this is just a new one, but... Turn around your sump plug like that. And then wipe it all the way around. And what you're trying to do is wipe it into the joint at the bottom. Like that. Then take your copper washer, put it on, squidge it into the Hylomar, put some more on there, and then wipe that round into the joint so that the copper washer is sandwiched between two layers of blue Hylomar and there's a little bit in the thread like that as well and that's it. Now, very important to mention not to slaver loads of this all over the thread because there's just no need, it'll all squash out. The other side of it is you don't want to blob on top because remember this will go into the sump and then that blob will float off and it'll go off and start wreaking havoc. The idea is that when you screw this in that double sandwich of two bits of Hylomar and a copper washer will squidge out, but it will squidge outwards and you can just wipe it off. So all you would do with that now is leave that to one side for about half an hour for all of the solvent to evaporate out of that so it becomes nice and sticky. And when it comes time to install that, put it in in two stages, like it says on the package. You put it in wrist tight, you know what that means, just hold the ratchet or the, or the spanner with your hand, turn it like that till it's tight, leave it, give it about 10 minutes, and then come back and torque it into place. Click, click, and that's it, done. And that will guarantee your sump plug will never leak. Even sump plugs that I've found in the past that are partially stripped and have been leaking, that will not leak. Now, one of the things with a sump plug is you're always getting oil dripping out of the sump. Unless it's been draining for three weeks, it will always have a drip of oil coming out. It doesn't matter. With Hylomar, that will seal, even if it's an oily thread going up into the sump, it doesn't matter. That will definitely seal it every time. And that's that. Now that's it with the Hylomar. One final thing, got a bit of swag for you.
Okay, I haven't done this for a very long time. Uh, a while ago, one of the viewers in America said, have you got a sew-on patch for my cut so I can sew it on and represent Devil's Garage? We haven't done this for a long time, like I said, so we contacted a company that we know that does them and said, how much would they be? And they said, well, there's no point in doing one because you have to pay for digitization. Mm -hmm. That's the word, it? Digitization, yep. to get it right. It worked out that 10, even just 10 of them, would work out about 10 pounds each. So we said, well, how much do they, what's the ratio and the scale? So it worked out that if we got 25 done, then we could do them at five pounds each, which we didn't think was too badly. Uh, obviously they would have become three pound each if we'd had a thousand, but we shouldn't probably need that many. Mm, don't think so. <laughs> we'll have them forever, but they have turned up and they are lovely. Now, the one that the guy wanted is gone off to him, but there they are. That is the quality of them. They're embroidered, just two colors. They've got a black embroidered section around the outside as well. So this, the bit that you sew into, that's not just trimmed off. They are really, really nicely made. They're black on the rear as well. They're just a really nice sewn patch and they cost us a five each. That is the cost price to us and we've got two dozen left. We, we bought 25, we sent one off to the guy who asked for it. We've got 24 left. So on a first come first serve basis, if you want one, they're 110 millimeters in, in metric and in old money, what's that? Four and a quarter inches, something mm -hmm. like that. So that's the usual sort of, sort of beer mat size. If you cut off, if you want one of those, if you're interested, what we would need is five pound for it and postage will be at whatever it costs to your corner of the planet. So if you drop us an email to the uh, email address below, uh, the usual Devil's Garage. At yahoo.com. That one, uh, we'll put a link below, and then we can go first come first served and get them out to you in your corner of the world. I think that's pretty cool, don't you, Pen? Yes, thank you, hopefully. Are. As yep. you can see, we've got that many, that's it. Now, if we have an absolute avalanche of requests of this, we can get another batch done, it's not the end of the world, but we didn't even think we'd do this many, so we just got two dozen to start with. So there we are. Anything else, Pen? Happy Tapping Sunday. Happy Tapping Sunday. Don't blow a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> better than yours. Oh, it's Take better it than easy. Me. Thank you for watching Ride Safe, and we will see you midweek for a rather interesting and much, much requested Harley Davidson fork oil change. And it is both cartridge and conventional forks. We'll show you how to change the oil for just a few quid and in just a few minutes. That's it then. Ride Safe. Ride Safe. Take it easy. See you in the week.